definite forgiveness would mean a definite recognition of our strength. That's Gandhi, that's from a biography called Mahatma, and that's in volume two. And it's a wonderful biography, by the way. It's, I think, in seven volumes, and it's by uh, Tendulkar. Highly recommended. Yeah, there's an amazing uh, episode in Gandhi's life where he issued a public apology for something. Don't remember what the issue was. And a, a woman follower of his, possibly actually an actual sister, he did have some, wrote to say, you know, you failed. You failed us. You apologized. You made yourself look bad. And he said, tell sister my apology was my victory. And this is, uh, again, a recognition that any interaction that we have with another person is an opportunity for us to grow as well as to change the situation, change the mind of the opponent. But of course, this completely flies in the face of our normal, uh, very separatist approach to conflict. I can remember a vice president of the United States, <laughs> no names please, when a United States naval destroyer had made a terrific mistake and killed 250 some people, he said, I don't care what the facts are, I will never apologize for the American people. He didn't realize that uh, what he was saying was the American people will never grow. They will never grow in relationships or in courage to make a distinction between the behavior and the person. This, again, is a respect in which how we are nonviolent to others enables us to be nonviolent to ourselves and vice versa. So a genuine apology, not, you know, not just uh, words, but one that's really meant from the heart. He always insisted on that. A genuine apology is a recognition that we can make mistakes. And that's essential if we are to recognize that other people can make mistakes and they have to be forgiven, just as we would wish to be forgiven ourselves. So this may seem like, uh, oh, I don't know, some sort of moral requirement, but it is that, and it's also a cornerstone of satyagraha, of nonviolence. <laughs> 